All right, what's going on everyone? I hope you're having an amazing day. Guys, this video, we're gonna be talking about the spawn. When bass push up, they're susceptible to being caught and you can catch the biggest fish of your life. We're gonna be focusing on some baits to get the job done. We're gonna be focusing really on the behavior of these fish and how you can really start to pattern your fish on your body of water that you're fishing. So guys, to kick it off, I do wanna say, check out Lake Pro Tackle for all your tackle needs. Roger Reels Tackle, BFS, JDM, big swim bait stuff. We got it all, um, well, maybe not all of it, but we got the good stuff anyway. So let's go ahead and start focusing and talking about the spawn. So. We are currently in, here in Texas, a very good pre-spawn time of the year. Right when those big fish start to make the big push from that 30 to 40, maybe 25 foot of water up to around that shallower, deeper water, you know, around eight to 20-ish foot. They're gonna be cruising around that range. They're gonna start moving towards your main creek areas, um, starting to push back into cuts, secondary points, and little drains like that. So. Uh, guys, for the sake of this video, I'm going to be really focusing on some of the cover that inhabits Lake Fork because the elites are right there um, fishing for these spawners and pre-spawn fish. The biggest weights are still in that pre-spawn stage, but people are still catching good limits, that 20 to 25 pound limits out in the bed fishing areas, back in cuts, back around shallow water. It can be an amazing time of the year. So kicking it off, guys, let's talk about the main push from that deeper water to shallow water. Why do they do it? Well, the bait fish have to move around in that warming water. And what happens is um, basically everything spawns in the spring. You know, your bait fish are gonna start spawning. There's probably generally gonna be a good little shad spawn going on. Those fish are gonna be looking for the shad. Um, everything is going to start getting more active. And what happens in the springtime um, from the winter time is that your days are gonna start getting longer and longer and longer. The water is gonna have more of a ch chance to heat up more and more and more throughout the day. And what you're really looking for when the fish really get up on their beds, and there's a difference between the pre-spawn, um, really good pre-spawn and bed fishing guys. Um, what happens is those fish are going to really stick to these areas, these pre-spawn deeper areas until they really want to make that push up and we call it staging, right? So you hear fish, hear fishermen talk about staging fish around a little bit deeper water, six to eight foot of water before they go up and actually lay their eggs, right? So first off guys, I do wanna get some fish biology out of the way, right? So the female fish here, Generally in the animal kingdom, the females are gonna get much bigger, especially in the, the fish kingdom here. The females are gonna get really, really big and your males are gonna be a little bit smaller. Uh, so typically a big average sized male is gonna be around two and a half to maybe three pounds. Now we've seen some big males like four to five pound males and those are gonna be really, really old males. You know, they have the good genetic possibility to, ability to get to that size. And also guys, females, world records like 20 some pounds, of course, like forks, ethyl, 18 pounds and some 18 pounds and some change, something like that. So these females can get to really, really big sizes as long as the food source is there and the pressure is the, is not there. So um, these fish, when they get old like that, they get smart. So uh, to catch one of these really, really smart big females, it takes a lot. The stars have to align or you just gotta get really lucky. So, you know, these big females, as you're looking for them um, on either forward facing sonar, down sand, sky, side scan, they're usually much easier to pick out in a crowd, but they're also harder to catch because they know you're fishing for them. One of the big things we're gonna be talking about is how the whole ecosystem works. And that's what I wanna stress on this channel here. You know, I wanna make sure that I'm putting out content to where you learn things and you're not just going out and I'm. it feels like I'm regurgitating stuff that you probably already know. I really wanna focus on the why and how more than just, you know, catching the fish. So that's my goal here. And if you are learning some stuff, it really helps if you leave a comment down below. It helps us in the algorithm. If you leave a like on the video, of course, and even if you skip through the video, guys, watching it all the way through really boosts us up in the algorithm and really pushes these videos and the channel to more and more people out there on YouTube. So I definitely really appreciate that. Um, so the big push from that deeper pre-spawn water up to the bank is a whole process. The photocycles get longer, the water's heating up, and the water has to stabilize 
for those fish to want to stay up there. Generally, these big females, they have a very, very specific taste. You know, they might be a Louis Vuitton girl, might be a Gucci girl. Um, it really just depends uh, on that female itself. And a lot of the times when they're staging guys, especially at Lake Fork, the timber, the stumps, the standing timber, they can move vertically depending on the water, uh, depending on the current going through with the high winds in the springtime because they will shift from north to south and do that quite a bit. So they wanna find a comfortable area in the lake that's generally protected from a lot of the wind uh, where uh, typically skinnier coves have a lot more fish because that's where bigger fish or fish will congregate the most because it's fully protected uh, as well as oddly positioned coves. I like to focus on east-west coves um, that are very, very skinny, real spawny looking coves, really flat in most areas with a main creek channel running in. And that is my general like key to finding really good and successful spawning areas. Uh, that east-west cove that runs this way or this way um, is really protected from a north or south wind, which is primarily the winds that you're gonna get in the springtime. So deeper cover like this, stumps. I've heard of so many people, especially Lee Livesey, who's one of the best guides out there on Fort Guys. He said he worked a giant bed fish on a stump like this in seven to six foot of water. And he could see the tail come up now and then as she was laying eggs and doing her thing. Um, and that's just a, one really, really good area. Now, not all fish do that. A lot of fish, females specifically on Lake Fork, will set up on docks and deeper timber. Now, of course, with the uh, you know, the forward-facing sonar revolution going on, we can find these fish in the deeper timber, but originally, flipping docks was the way to go, and it's still a great way to go. Any vertical cover that reaches far out into the water in deeper water is generally more beneficial. So, staging-wise, these fish, these big females, and we're gonna try to focus on the females because they're more fun to catch, generally get bigger, blah, 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 right? So these females are gonna stage a lot deeper right here. Where are my pins? Uh, there we go. So these big females, they'll stage deeper water starting off, guys. Whether they're at the tip, directly under, starting to move back, guys. That's kind of how they move towards the spawning date right there. Uh, in the meantime, guys, the male fish, your two to two and a half, three pounder males, are going to go up and make the bed here. So what they're doing, they're gonna brush it out with their tail, they're gonna get everything ready, and they're going to put on their fancy tuxedo and you know have flowers ready for the female to swim by, drop some eggs, and then move on. So uh, uh, one big misconception about females is that they will sit in an area and you know sit there for a really long time. Now you might get some females that sit up there for maybe one or two days, but typically it happens very, very fast. And this is one of the big decisions that the Elite Series guys, Pro Series guys, have to think about when it is spawn time. Do they spend two hours trying to catch a 10 pounder? Is it worth it? Can they catch two fives in the time it takes them to catch that 110? Uh, it, it really just depends on the fishery. I know Lake Fork guys, there's some massive fish in there. Um, there've already been, I think three or four, maybe five, 10 pounders caught, several nine, several eights. Uh, and it's really just a game of making the right decision on what to focus on. So, um, if you're pond fishing guys, this is gonna happen a lot earlier for you. So I know some of the ponds around my house, fish are already spawning. They're getting up there, you see their beds, kind of like this, it's just gonna be a circle guys. It's gonna be a bare spot. Typically, if you've got a sand bottom, you're really gonna see it because it pops out, the sand's gonna be cleared away. If you're fishing around grassy areas here, especially with uh, either hydrilla or pond weed or something like that guys, that reaches far into the water, those fish, need sunlight on their eggs, they need good oxygenated water, and they also need it to be in an area that doesn't heat up and cool down too much in the nighttime temps. And that can really ruin a spawn if you get cold front after cold front after cold front because the, uh, the water temp has to be a certain uh, range for those eggs to actually hatch. So uh, the bed itself, let's talk about this for a second, that the male's making over here. The bed itself, it's just gonna be, just imagine it like a crater. You take a bowling ball, drop it in the sand. It's gonna be pushed out on the sides. Sometimes, a, a lot of the time actually, the fish like to spawn on a dock post. They like to spawn on like, like a lay down log like this in the water. Um, 
anywhere they can get extra protection from predators or um, bait fish or like bluegill um, that are trying to get into their nest, they're gonna do that. Uh, so if you're fishing like an overhang like that, there probably will be a bed under there. And when you flip into it, you know, the fish is gonna eat because a lot of people don't think about, um, you know, flipping into the deepest, darkest pieces of areas and that, that can be one super, super good way to get more bites in the springtime, especially bedding fish like this. But anyway, the fish that are fishing in the grass, you know, bedding up in the grass, you can really see them. A lot of the times the pocket is going to be completely wide open. Uh, typically you throw a Senko or a fluke over in there and that fish will eat it because it can't really see you because that grass is built all the way around it like a wall. So it can't really see you, but anything that enters this realm it will be very opportunistic and eat it. But for the sake of just bed fishing in general here, um, let me go ahead and erase this stump here and then get rid of the top part of the dock. So this is what I call the danger zone and I'm gonna kind of split up the bed right here. So here is the bed and here are, it's like a bullseye kind of, here are the eggs. X marks the spot. That's that's typically where they're gonna drop the eggs. Now it can shift with the wind and all that, but let's say the female just drops some smack dab right in the center, guys. So the big female, what they'll do is once they actually lay their eggs, which generally happens pretty quickly, guys, they're going to evacuate the really, really shallow water where they're susceptible to being caught and susceptible to uh, predators. They're gonna go off around and protect the eggs for just a little bit, not too long. Um, but if it is a dock situation, they're gonna set up on the first pile where they can actually still see their nest. And if the male is lacking on his job, he's sleeping, he's too tired or something, she will occasionally come in and do a lap back out to scare out the bluegill or whatever is trying to eat her eggs. So the female typically stays pretty close. If you can land on her at the time, she's actually up there protecting very aggressively. That is a great period of time to catch them. So female typically will stay out in the outer ring from the bed, usually doesn't sit on it unless she's either laying eggs or just laid eggs and wants to rest there. Um, and then the male, once they come back in, they're going to generally sit most of the time. This is from my bed fishing experience and bed fishing experiences of other people I talk to, the male is gonna be sitting right in this ring here where it can easily see the eggs it can easily see what's around it, and it really has to be careful for the new, uh, the nuisance bluegills that are sitting up right behind it because it can't see behind it. Fish have eyes that point up and out. So bluegill out this way are gonna sit right behind the bass, and then of course bluegill will try to get in here, 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 and try to get to the eggs, and it's just gonna chase them out. They're very, very aggressive, so when you do catch males that have been protecting an area like this for a long time. They're gonna be extremely skinny. Um, they might catch a few bluegill here and there, but those bluegill are smart. You know, they've adapted to work together to get to the prize, which is eating the bass eggs, guys. So if the male is off running something, that female's gonna come in and they just play this game. They generally both won't be on the bed directly at the same time, but this is something to look for. So talking about some lures that are really good uh, for the spawn time for bed fishing, of course, all your white baits are typically going to be pretty good. Um, but the reason I think most people use the white is so that they can visually see it. That way you're not wasting a hook set. You know, you want to make sure that bait is all the way in that fish's mouth. And that really helps because you can see through the water. Let's go ahead and start at, um, the top water, which I generally like to start with. Um, you know, if you can get a fish on a top water, uh, like I said, that fish is usually looking up, um, you know, because their eyes are set that way when they're sitting on the bottom, guys. Um, the first thing they can really see is up and out. So if you can get a top water on top of that fish's head, and let's say for, these are non-pressured fish, you know, this is a new spawner. Um, a frog can be very, very deadly as well as a popper. Something that you can keep there and work very, very slowly, cause disturbances above that fish, it can be insane, especially if you've got grassy areas like this hydrilla here, or if you've got hard cover like a tree or a lay down or something like that, guys. You work that frog around this grass into the bed, into the strike zone here. Uh, that fish, more often than not, will go straight up for it, destroy it, and I mean, fish on, guys. It can be super, super amazing. 
Um, you just got to make sure one of the biggest challenges of working the bed fish and getting the bed fish in is actually getting a hook in them and actually getting them to the boat. So you want to make sure you've got a really good frog. The scum frog by um, American Bait Works and scum frog, this thing right here is the, the launch frog. The hookup ratio is insane. It has a nice gap on it. The frog itself is extremely, extremely soft, but very durable. Uh, and I absolutely love this one. Tim loves this one as well. It looks really weird. You know, it doesn't look froggy itself, but a black color like this uh, is, is a great silhouette, especially on bluebird days or even cloudy days. It works uh, all times of the year. And I love a black buzz bait as well. If I'm just trying to cover bank and I need to work it over those little holes in the grass like this very efficiently, very effectively later in not the post spawn, but really the heat of the spawn, those fish can't resist a frog sitting over their head waiting to just dive down and eat their eggs, right? So another bait to get more of a pure reaction strike, and if you didn't watch my latest video, go watch that one. I'm gonna link it somewhere over here. Um, go watch that one. It talks about uh, the hunger bites, the reaction bites and all that. So another great way to get a reaction bite out of the fish is something with a big swim bait, guys. You know, a big swim bait is a very big target for these fish. Um, a very nuisance target because it can destroy the nest. So they want to get it out there, out of the area as quickly as possible. Now this clutch starter here is a chopping style glide bait, very similar to something like a Spro Chad Chad or Chad Chad. Um, so you're typically not fishing these around super grassy areas because it does have treble hooks. So let's focus more on like your ponds and uh, some non weedy areas guys. So like this over here, as this glide bait or this chopper style glide bait works its way near the bed, what you want to do is try to get it very suspending, maybe a slow sink. And once you get it up to the bed, you want to see how that fish reacts. If it's very aggressive right off the bat, just start working that bait super fast, making the head chop, letting it sit there. And that fish should, I mean, nine times out of 10, if it does that acts aggressive, as soon as it comes near this range of the bed, it is going to eat it. Uh, if you're finding that the fish starts to move away from the bed, you can let this sit here, especially if it's suspending guys or a very, very slow sink. You can let it just sit there in the bed, wait for that fish to come back and make it react with those quick chopper styles. Now, if it's if that fish is in a very, very negative mood, it will probably eat the baits one out of 10 times, 10 casts. It just takes a lot to work that fish to get it more aggressive, more and more aggressive as it sees this bait more often. Um, if you put something in the bass's area that's completely new to it like it has no idea it's curious it needs to go check it out and eat it and get it out of the bed if it's seen it a couple times it's going to be more susceptible to saying no i know you're not real you're not a threat you're not eating the eggs so i'm not going to go eat you right so that's my thinking on that and definitely watching the last video will definitely help now if you need something that needs to sit in the bed that's a big target this is really really fun to do guys a mag draft a freestyle with a beast hook whether you add a little bit of weight or not, guys, this can be very, very deadly. Doing the same exact thing, working it all the way through the bed can be very effective. Just swimming it through multiple times. That bass should go eat it. If not, the beauty of the freestyle is it's weedless. You can flip it in the weeds here. I mean, let it just sink down, sit there, wait for the bite, wait for your line to start moving out. Or again, like here, you just let it sit in the bed make it just kind of shake your rod a little bit as you see guys doing just kind of shaking it there acting like it's down there eating the eggs so the big baits generally those fish are more curious and they know they have to get out of there quick because um a, a fish this size like a bluegill a big bluegill something like that can absolutely ruin a bed all right moving on something very similar to those guys there uh, where it's a very true presentation like a like a bait fish or a bluegill or something like that the bellows gills guys these things are super amazing set them up uh, this is the 3.8 version uh really great for just about any perch uh representation guys this is a honeydew it's got chartreuse and it's got white on the back so this is a great sight fishing lure um and it's got a great profile great bluegill profile um really the main things that target bass beds um, because the bluegill like eating those little eggs uh you know they make a ton of different colors in these if you want to specifically sight fish this can be very very beneficial it's so bright uh draws a lot of attention has the amino scent on it uh which causes those fish to react very very aggressively so 
uh, it's just simple Texas rig. You can do a beast hook style where it's got a weighted keel on it. Very, very weedless. These are super awesome. Highly recommend those. A couple other baits that you can do um, for your more traditional bed fishing are, of course, going to be a tube. If you watched uh, Amistad, I believe Ish Monroe was throwing a big tube out there. Uh, these can be great. They imitate basically everything. The Maxent tubes are really awesome. They've got the Maxent on them and the tube in general isn't thrown a lot. So if you are fishing for more pressured fish in your ponds or your lakes or anything like that, this can be extremely deadly on a Texas rig or a stupid tube version, whatever works for you, whatever's more weedless. If you've got weeds or just straight on a jig head on a open bed like that. One of my personal favorites, guys, is going to be the Zoom Z-Craw in white here. This is going to be the white pearl. These things are badass on a Texas rig, three quarter, uh, not three quarter, sorry, uh, three sixteenths or a quarter ounce generally gets the job done for me. If it's a little windier, I might go to uh, like a, almost a half ounce, like three eighths, half ounce if it's super, super windy. And if I can get away with it, if the water's not super, super clear, I might throw braid. I do like a little stretch, especially if I'm fishing vegetation like this. If it's thick vegetation, braid all the way. If I'm fishing anything else, generally gonna throw like 17 pound fluorocarbon. Now, it also depends what hooks I'm throwing on this. If it's a thicker hook, 17, maybe 20, generally not 20, but 17 is my go-to, 15 uh, for my lighter wire hooks and 12 even sometimes if it's open water and they can't get snagged in anything like that. Uh, another great bait for more of a pure, just aggressive approach, um, kind of similar to the z -Craw here is going to be like a Hags Undertaker Jr. This thing has just tons and tons of appendages on it. It's got six appendages. It's got uh, two on the back, two claws, and two little frills here. Uh, you can cut it apart and make it more finessey, and that's what I love about the Hags Undertaker Juniors. Um, it's got the ribbed body, so it folds up really, really nicely when a fish goes to, uh, you know, just suck it in, really get it out of there. And you got to be careful too. One of the great things about the sight fishing stuff with white is a lot of the times those fish will suck in your bait and then they'll spit it right back out. So having that white bait, being able to not see your bait when that fish eats it is a great sign that you're ready to set the hook. Now, uh, one of the uh, more consistent techniques with uh, older older guys uh, is pitching a jig on a bed. Anything, you know, like of course a creature bait like that, but a jig is very great because it, it's, it's weedless, it has the skirt, it creates a secondary action that can sit there. You can put a Hags Tornado or a Z-Craw or a Rage Menace or a Rage, you know, Rage Craw on the back of a jig. It can be very, very effective in either situation. Um, and, it, you know, just, I, you can't go wrong with it. You know, one of my favorite ones is this new Tungsten Strike King Jig. It's a tour grade and that's all I have to say about that. Half ounce, generally what I go with just because the skirt material slows it down and I like to have a good meaty, rage cross style um, trailer on there, especially to work them really, really fast. I like to flip it in fast, get it out, work it in, get it out, and they really just have to react to it because it goes in so fast and gets out of their face. If you haven't tried this one here, the sleeper or the dark sleeper guys, it can be very, very effective on beds. Just kind of work it just like a jig. Um, really the one thing you have to watch out for is the hook. The hook is light-ish wire to where you can set the hook, still get a good hook in them. Um, but you do have to make sure that you aren't horsing these fish too much on the dark sleeper because although the hook is strong, it's not the strongest one and you know, you're better off really just wrenching on them with an EWG or an offset worm or something like that. One of the most effective techniques all year round when you're up shallow or even out deep is a Senko guys, Yamamoto, uh, especially in the spawn time. Um, these have a lot of salt in them. So if you want your bait or you need your bait to really sit on that bed and you can really work it there, almost dead walking style where you shake it and it flutters back down real fast onto that bed. These guys right here have a ton of salt. If you need something to stay suspended for a longer time, go with like a yum dinger. It has like, it has less salt. So it's going to sit in the upper strike zone a little more than on the bottom of that bed, right? So Senko, wacky rigged. Texas rigged, really all great options. It's a finessier technique. So 
typically I'm going to be throwing this Senko. I, I don't like bringing a Senko out unless the fish is really, really pressured and I need to get it in or want to get it in. Um, so that is my thoughts on the Senko. Now, another great option is a Nico rig. I like Nico rigging these guys right here, the Robo Worms, fat straight, or straight tails and fat straight tails. Um, really lightweight, you know, it's gonna be the same principle as really anything here. You can do a lot of things with it. Increase your weight to leave it there uh, and decrease your weight to have it really just flutter around and cause them to just make a reaction bite on it. So you can drop shot these, you can Nico rig these, do a lot of things with them. Martin's Madness, one of my favorite colors. They make a couple um, brighter colors like in whites and pearls. Uh, so you can play with that as you will. But guys, I hope you enjoyed the video here. Uh, you know, spawn fishing is definitely an intricacy that not a lot of people are great at. You know, you can be good at spawn fishing, you know, just working that fish for a long time, but the great ones can do it in five casts or so. Uh, a lot of the time, newly bed, new bed fish that go up uh, are very susceptible to being caught. It doesn't take a lot of casts to get them. And if they are fresh guys, it can be a blast. Now I've caught a couple fish out on my home lakes and other lakes around here where I can go to a pond and all of a sudden that fish has like five hook hook holes in its mouth because it's been sitting there for a while. Generally going to be your males. Um, but you know, the best way to get more bites is just go out there, go fish. Um, even if it feels cold outside, that water temp is heating up just because the sun's hitting it. So be on the lookout for some bedfish coming up in your waters. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the video guys. Leave a like on it. Leave a comment down below. I really appreciate it. We'll see you next time. See you guys.